Welcome back, everyone, to Midday Super Talk Mississippi. We're coming at you live from the Element Well Studios, temporarily repositioned at the uh, Mississippi Armed Forces Museum in the heart of Camp Shelby. And joining us now, Major General Jansen Boyles. He's the Mississippi National Guard Adjutant General. General, always good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Gerard. Yes, good sir. Thanks for having me. Uh, lots of activities planned here at Camp Shelby as we um, honor those who yep. gave uh, their lives and paid the ultimate price to preserve our freedoms. Memorial Day uh, as we celebrate it coming up uh, this Monday. What we got going on? Well, uh, of course, we had our uh, wreath laying today where we honored our Gold Star families. And uh, I'll tell you, it was really just, just a wonderful ceremony. Um, you know, I just sat there and listened to the comments uh, as they were being presented and uh, just brings, I mean, truly just brings, it's an emotional moment. Uh, the uh, just, to, just to understand on this weekend that we've lost men and women uh, who had their lives in front of them and who probably could have made an incredible impact and contribution to this country. Yeah. And uh, just not have them with us anymore. So we need to remember that and we need, we need to remember them by name. Yeah. yeah. You're so right. And, um, you know, every day ought to be Memorial Day, if you think about it, because we are so blessed to live in this country. Uh, and, and though we have our warts, we have our challenges because we're humans. Yeah. And But there's no better place on the earth. This is the, the greatest country um, man ever uh, created uh, with, with God's guidance and, and wisdom. And it uh, wouldn't be here were it not for those sacrifices. I mean, we've been challenged so many times because we are the greatest. We are the best. Yeah. Uh, but it's because of their sacrifice that, that we are here. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and we export that, which is yeah. something we need to remember, yeah, too. Exactly. You know, we don't, we don't sit here and train and become very good in the greatest country in the world. We export it so that other countries can follow our lead and can understand, you know, how to train and how to, uh, you know, have freedom in their country and, and all those things. So yeah. it's, it's important not only that we're the greatest, but that we export our knowledge to the rest of the world. No doubt about it. And so um, the significance of honoring Gold Star families, why, why is that so important? Yeah, and, and, and again, it's, it's um, you know, um, talking to our honorees this morning, um, you know, she was very emotional about it. And yeah. this was her older brother. And uh, she remembers him, uh, and the day that he went off to 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 camp to basic training, and um, he didn't come home. Right. And uh, you know those families, we we have to embrace those families, and and take care of them. You know we've had those issues going on more recently. Of course, that was a World War II yep. veteran, but in this case, we've had so many more recent uh, losses and uh, so many more Gold Star families. So we just we just have to embrace them. And uh, this yeah. is a great weekend to, to remember them. You know, the thing about it is that it, anytime I've interacted with them is they're, they're not bitter about it. I mean, they, they're, and they're, uh, they're, of course, they're sad and, and they're shaken and it's not anything you ever get over. Uh, but they're still proud. There's a sense yeah. of pride. Yeah. And, you know, and, and again, I think it's, there's, there's a sense of loss there. And of course I could never explain it. Uh, we've lost some friends, and uh, we certainly interact with their families. And, uh, again, it goes back to, I think, that lost potential. Um, we've got uh, one gentleman who was a first sergeant, a great leader, probably would have led this organization, to be very honest with you, Gerard, that we lost in Iraq um, back in 2005. And, and um, his life had so much potential. Yeah. So, so, you know, I guess... I guess at the end of the day, what this means to me is that um, we've lost some really um, talented men and women who gave their life for this country, but they were so willing to put the uniform on yeah. and and understanding that that might happen, make the contribution that they made. Yeah. And, and we just have to remember that. I totally agree. Uh, this museum's fantastic. Yeah. It is, and it's so fitting and so so needed we we need to yep. to hold on to those memories and we and we need to uh, exhibit and recognize uh, those from mississippi 
who served in our armed forces. And this museum just does a fantastic job of telling that story. And thanks for that. And I think I think what really makes this museum special is we're telling stories in here. So anybody who hadn't been here, and of course those who have, uh, they, they've got storyboards about individuals and it tells those individual right. stories. And some of them we've lost, uh, yep. you know, that we're remembering this Memorial Day. Others, you know, went on to live productive lives, but they're special people. Uh, who made a contribution to this country's defense and freedom. And uh, I would encourage everybody to come in here and see this museum. It's not hard to get through the gate. You show your driver's license, and the gate guards are friendly. And yep. you, it's not hard to find the museum on the property. We yep. just encourage everybody to come in here and take advantage of seeing this story. It's awesome. Totally yeah. agree. Uh, I've had the pleasure and honor of interviewing uh, many of the members of the team here. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic team. It is. So um, we, we're lucky, and we've, I think I've told this story before, but uh, Tommy and his whole team, we've got a couple of folks that we picked up from the World War II Museum down yeah. in New Orleans. We were lucky that uh, the director, um, Tommy Lofton, uh, is from Mississippi yeah. and wanted to get back home. Uh, he'd worked down there for 10 years interviewing most of the veterans that they have tapes of down there. So he had a real, he had real experience of working with veterans. And uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have him here. Yeah. Really are. Very talented. Um, Colonel Weaver just shared that we've got 28,000 scheduled to come in this summer for yeah. training. Yeah, so we can house about 12,000 comfortably. We're going to we're, our higher water marks going to be about 10, 8, 10, 9 at any one time. Okay. But uh, the 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 real the real story here is that we have seven brigades coming in here to train, maybe eight, from different states. Right. Uh, the the National Guard has five. Uh, Armored Brigade Combat Teams, which are the tanks, three of them are coming here this summer to train. Okay. Just to put that in perspective for wow. you. So um, Camp Shelby is sought after. Uh, we provide great customer service. That's why they come back. That's what the colonel said. And um, we're excited to have them here because they bring their, you know, revenue with yeah. them. Yeah. And they spend it on the local economy. And uh, the more we can build this enterprise, we want to do it, Jordan. What are you focused on these days in terms of the training? So um, we've got about um, 1,500 to 2,000 men and women going out the door next year uh, back to defend the uh, mission in the Middle East. You know, we've got to hold ground there while we look at other sure. parts of the world. And uh, so it's aviation, it's military police, it's um, our armor brigade combat team is going to send a small team out of about 1,000 folks. Um, so we're excited about next year, which means that we have to focus on their hard training this year at Camp Shelby. It's a very important part of their training to get that right this year so they're ready to go out the door next year. And that will begin in about the April, uh, May time frame next year. I got you. And, of course, one of the major uh, situations where the Guard gets involved is when we experience these, these uh, natural disasters. And certainly uh, that's not something we're unfamiliar with here in Mississippi with respect yep. to hurricanes, tornadoes, and so forth always do a fantastic job but the technology is improving quite a bit the tools uh, available to uh, the guard troops to it help is. in it those is. situations it is so we're focusing on that here at camp shelby also uh both the offensive tools and the defensive tools and what i mean by that is that uh you've seen in this recent ukraine war that electronic warfare is part of the sure. puzzle that they're trying to figure out uh, we're bringing those tools to Shelby so that we can train on electronic warfare and those type things. Okay. We have connectivity that we're building here so that we can, uh, uh, f you know, fight on laptops or electronic devices, deal with drones and all that. And that's an important part of this next generation of fight. Right. Is to make sure that electronically we can do all those things, move, shoot, and communicate. Just talking to uh, a Master Sergeant, Nick Campo, about recruiting into the guard and yeah. and we were discussing how many of those sorts of skills that you gain by being trained in the guard yeah. and serving are transferable into the private sector yeah that's been an initiative that we've started about three years ago uh, the most recent one that got the most uh, attention is is trucking uh, we have a trucking tractor unit in south haven huh. and the proximity is not by accident yeah. because there's a lot of you know, distribution, distribution so forth around Memphis, yep. And uh, so you can join the Mississippi Guard, become a trucker, and yep. uh, we'll get you to the trucking school at Fort Lee, but you come back, we can get you licensed as a commercial driver, and you can serve in the Guard, be a trucker on the weekend or at AT, and then also have that as your military career. And that's just, I mean, as your civilian career. That's just one example. Wow, that is awesome, so especially when you consider the shortage of truck drivers and the demand. 
I'm telling you, if I were 17 year old, I'd be looking at it. You know, and it, it doesn't have to be my lifetime career, right? But it's a great paycheck to start, no doubt. And then I can convert that into something later on in life if I'm interested. Yeah. So um, we're, we want to help you get started yeah. in life, and the National Guard's a great way to do it. Got it, uh, Major General. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thanks, Gerard. Yes, sir. Appreciate you always. Yes, sir. Major General Jansen Boyles, the Mississippi National Guard Adjutant General, has been our guest here on Middays. When we come back, Paula Caruth. Gold Star Mother. Stay with us. Good.